Years ago, I used to buy anchovies working at another restaurant. They were generally about a day out of the water, and I thought that was fresh. One day, I received my anchovies late in the day, and what had happened was that the boat was out fishing late in the morning, because that's when the tide was right, and anchovies come into the restaurant, and I'm blown away by the quality. And what had happened was is that my fish purveyor at the time basically sent his driver to go pick up the anchovies and bring them right to the restaurant in double time. I called him immediately and I said, you know, what is going on with these anchovies? And he goes, man, I'm so sorry that they're late. I said, I don't, I'm fine that they're late. What is going on? Because they're, they're the best anchovies I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like this before. You're telling me that these are about an hour out of the water. How do we do this every single time? I always need to know. I need to know like how things were caught, when they were caught, how they got to the to the middleman or how they're coming to me directly. I just want to know the steps because I can better formulate how I need to go and proceed. Minimize the time spent out of water as much as you possibly can. Minimize the handling of these fish as much as you can. And that's where we came up with the anchovy protocol. Anchovy protocol. Anchovies come in from our fish purveyor, 2 by C. Everything stops. We're all hands on deck. 
we'll take the heads off in a diagonal and then you slice through the belly. We scrape kind of the inner lining of the belly. It's like just a little bit of black coloring. And then into the ice bath for scaling. The brine is lime juice, salt, water, uh, jalapenos, either basil or cilantro, and uh, fresh garlic. And then into the brine. Anchovies are a bait fish. It's the bottom of the food chain. The entire ecosystem here in the Pacific and all over the world depend on bait fish to survive. When we think of an anchovy, we think of it's either something that goes on the end of a hook or it's something that's a pizza topping that we don't want to eat in the first place. Quarter of a mile away from here is t-shirt shops and bread bowl chowder, and that's as far as most people think it goes. There's this beautiful working waterfront with the commercial fleet, the salmon boats, the crab boats, the anchovies boats, and it's part of San Francisco's history. You know, I think people don't buy fish that's from here is because we're, we're so lost at what we want and what we think we want. And because of global trade, everything's available 365 days a year. So you wake up in the morning and you want a piece of salmon, there's a piece of salmon from somewhere. Instead of eating seasonally and cooking seasonally and incorporating local cuisine and the history of the food scene of the Bay Area to points north to points south, and the cuisine that we eat here came from all over the world. But we're taking those recipes and we're adding our local goods instead of having to get fish from halfway across the Atlantic or halfway across the Pacific. Why when we have such beautiful fish right here in our backyard? So when we started working with these anchovies, showing these to Stuart and seeing the reaction that he had and the excitement that he had, his brain was just spinning of the things that he was gonna be able to do with these things. The anchovy pan con tomate that we do at State Bird, it really originated with the idea when I was traveling through Spain and I just fell in love with just the simple snack. And my understanding from, from a number of uh, my Spanish friends is that was just a, a childhood snack of toasting bread, rubbing it with a little garlic, and taking a fresh overripe tomato and rubbing it and breaking it on the, on the bread. That's the most simplistic version of it and probably the most important version. And I started to think, I was like, wow, what, how can we do this in, in San Francisco? What we do is fresh tomatoes that are pulled off the vine. Similar protocol as our anchovies. We marry those with bread that we bake every day. And it's super important that if we're gonna do toast, we bake the bread that day, we toast it. And I like to use clarified butter. That's kind of the, the key to ours, rather than using olive oil. And then just a light rub of garlic, and then a big dollop of that fresh seasoned tomato pulp that goes on. And then we cover it with glistening anchovy fillets. It's perfect. The idea of taking this ingredient and giving it this treatment and then serving it in our restaurants and then letting people know that these are local, it's unbelievable. There's really nowhere in the country that you can find a local bocarone or a local pickled anchovy. It's really specific to, to the Bay Area. And I think that the time is right for this. He's basically set a standard for other chefs around the area to use these things and to experiment and to create and to wow patrons with amazing dishes using the bottom of the food chain.
can look at so much of what we do in our kitchens and we can really kind of trace back the lineage to this anchovy protocol. Imagine that, it's not just us, it's Kenny, it's Eric, you know? It's the driver, it's all the cooks, it's my dishwashers who've never worked with anchovies before. They recognize how important that is and the work quality of daily and everyday tasks go up. There's no doubt in my mind that these small fish, the anchovies, have made me a better chef. It's unreal.